Now we understand what a finite state machine is. Let's add those state machines into the game. So we can use it to create interactions and different moving things around. Let's try moving things around. Okay, so let's click on this cube. Right, so we have the cube selected. And what I want to do now is I just want to create a motion. I want this cube to move when the game starts. How do we do that? Let's go to Playmaker. Right click to add FSM, which is finite state machine. Okay, now we have state one. You can change the name to something else. Start moving. Okay. And uh, there are a lot of different parts in the Playmaker that we can talk about, but instead of going through them right now, let's create something that we can see and, and see it moving. And through that exercise, hopefully you get to get a sense of how this works, right? So we were, what we want to do is we want to start moving this cube when the game starts. Now go in the state tab, click on the action browser, and you'll be presented with a list of actions here. And Playmaker comes with a lot of different actions for you to use. And this is great because instead of having to manually write out or code these actions in, in a programming language in C Sharp or, or JavaScript, you just drag and drop these into your state. So we're, we're just going to do something really simple. right? So we're going to go to scroll down, transform. Now remember, transform is this little component here on your object. Right? Every object has a transform, and it, it decides the position and rotation and scale of the object. Now we want to move this object, which means we will be changing its position. Right. So what we need now is an action that's in the transform category. Right. So when you open up the, the actions browser, you have all these different categories. Right. So let's go to transform. And what we want to do is, let's do a rotate. Actually, no, let's do, uh, let's, yeah, let's do transform, translate, okay? So we're, we're going to just move this object along the x axis. What a translate means is it basically just moves an object on the three axes. So you can click on translate and click on add action to state or you can simply double click on it. Now that we have translate this action translate in the state which is named start moving right So game object use owner which means we're going to move this owner object here cube and uh, let's just say we're going to translate this. I'm going to put down one. So that's going to be how much to move on the x axis. Now this might be too much. Let's, let's see how, how that looks in the game. And we want it to move one unit per second. And every frame. Now I'm going to talk about this next. But uh, just keep make sure that these two are checked. And then that's hit play. Now you can see that there's another three buttons here on the Playmaker panel that's the same as the three here. So let's play. And you can see that now this cube is moving. Now we have something that moves in our game. Great. So that's a basic example of how this works. Now if we do that again and then look at the object in the scene view. Hit play. And now this object is moving along the x axis at a speed of one unit per second, as we defined in the translate action. Come back here. Translate. Now we only have one state for this 
cube because that's all we wanted to do now is we wanted to move in this one direction. Um, the next example we'll have will have will start to have multiple states that you can you can play with. Um, also notice there is a start transition. So every single playmaker FSM has a starting state, which means which simply means when the game starts, what's the state the object is in. So let's say if I add another state here, and I'll say this is rotate, All right? And uh, I can make this into a start state. So when the game starts, instead of going into this state and start moving, this cube is going to go to this rotate state. It doesn't actually do anything right now, but I'm going to do, uh, let's see if I change this to, click on the action browser again, and uh, I want it to rotate. Right, so there's an action called rotate. Another thing, you, another thing you can do is you can do a search rotate, and again in the transform category you have rotate. Uh, double click on this game object. Use owner. The owner is the cube, which is this cube here. And let's just say rotate around y. 10, fifteen. Let's do fifteen. And then per, per second. And then hit play. Notice how it's no longer moving, it's simply rotating. And if we check, click on Playmaker, you can see that the rotate state is highlighted with this green border. That means this state is active and you can also see that here it says rotate that's the state we're in uh, another place you can see this is on um, by default in the game view you'll see the state of the object as well now what if we want it to switch the state what we can do is, okay, let's say if I want this object to rotate for three seconds and then start moving in the X direction. What we can do is, let's add an event, a transition event, finished, okay? And click on this event and then drag drag this to the next state. You can also move this around. What this is going to do is once when, when this object is in the rotate state and then this event happens then it's going to go to the start moving state which will move the cube. What we need to do here is we need to add one more action. Right. So I'm going to add this action called wait action. It's in the time category. Double click on it and I'm going to say wait three seconds. And when after you waited you've waited three seconds, finish event, select finished. Right. So the object is going to stay in this state and rotate for three seconds. And once that three second is up, it's going to send an event finished. And then it's going to go to finished, which leads us to start moving. Okay, let's see how this works. Click on play. Okay, now we're in the rotate state. You can see that it was rotating and now it's moving. That might be a bit too fast. Let's change that to um, 10 seconds. Okay. Start. We're in the rotate state, it's rotating here. It's going to do that for 10 seconds. And now it starts to move. So you can see that it went from a rotate state to start moving state. And if we go back to the scene, it's 
continue moving because it's in the move state and we have this action that tells the cube to keep moving on the x axis. So that, that's the first example. Let's review what we've just done again, just to make sure everyone's following this. Okay. So first, I'm, I'm moving these states around so that we can, um, it's a little bit more organized for me, right? So first we created states, different states that we think this cube is going to be in, right? So we want the cube to have two states. One is when it's rotating and one is when it's moving. I'm just going to move, change this to move so it's a bit more consistent. Rotate and move. So, so the cube does two things. It, it's either in a rotating state or a moving state. And to move between states, we need events. As we were uh, a couple of videos ago, we were talking about the concept of a state machine where you have states, objects are in different states, and in between states, you have events that transfers you from one state to the next. So in this simple example, we have the finished event that simply says, once this object is activated, though the game starts, once you're in the state for 10 seconds, then we're going to go to the finished event. And from the finished event, we're going to go to the move state. Now let's imagine if we have a third state that says stop. And it simply does nothing. Right? We don't want it to do anything. We just want the cube to stop doing anything that it's doing. I can change this to say, okay, when you've rotated for 10 seconds, see how I just move? I click on the event and drag to a different state. So when you've rotated for 10 seconds, go to the finished event, and we're going to go to the stop state. At this point, the cube will stop doing anything because there's no action here. The cube is simply going to sit there and not do anything. Right. So let's see how that works. I'm going to keep this here so we can see the states being transferred. Right. Okay. So now it's rotating. It's in the rotate state. And we're going to wait for 10 seconds. And now it's in a stop state. Right, so it's not doing anything because there's no action. It's not moving because it's not in the move state. Now, how do we string all three of them together? Right, so what we can do is I'm going to say rotate. When you finish rotating, go to move. And when you finished moving, go to stop. And when you've stopped for a few seconds, go back to rotate. And how do we do that? We can add same thing. We're going to add a wait action and say move for five seconds and go to the finished event. And now it's going to go to stop. And again, I'm going to add a wait action. And instead of going to the action browser and find the wait action, I'm going to simply copy, so click on wait, and copy selected action, go to the next state, or the stop state, right click, and paste action. Right. You can also do it with Control C and Control V or Command C and Command V on the Mac. Right. So in the stop state, it doesn't do anything. It simply waits for five seconds and then finish uh, and then goes to the finished event. Now it says finished event finished. These two does not have to match. This could be this event could have a different name, and then we can go into that later. We can have customized custom names for these events. But let's see how that looks. So it's rotating for 10 seconds.
a bit long. Now it's moving. Uh, let's go to the scene view. It's moving. Now it's stopped. It has stopped. Went to the start view. And now it's rotating again. Let me pause this for a second so you can always pause the game using this button here. I'm going to move Playmaker down here so we can see everything working together since the game view doesn't actually tell us much. Okay, I'm going to unpause the game. Okay, see that it's in the rotate state. It's rotating. Now it's in the move state. It's moving. Now it's in the stop state for another five seconds. And it's just going to keep going, keep looping between these three states that we have defined. Moving again, and then five seconds later, it's now in the stop state. Okay, so that's a simple state. And another thing I want to mention is now you have this icon here that has this it's a Chinese character that says play, which is Playmaker's icon. So it just tells you which objects have a Playmaker component. And also, if you come to your inspector, you can see that there is a Playmaker FSM component here as well. And this is, as we've mentioned earlier, Unity is a component-based engine, so it, when you add a playmaker component that shows up in your inspector. And you can change the name of this component. Um, we'll talk about template later. And you can have some, some more information about the state. Um, one nice thing about playmaker is you can add multiple states to one object. So each state could be controlling a different aspect of the object. So for example, this state, what we've just created, it simply rotates, moves, and stop. So we can say this as a moving behavior. And we can add another one See, I've just added another Playmaker state machine, and let's imagine if I am going to have some player control, I can say, okay, I'm going, I'm going to define all my controls in this state machine. And it's, it's, it's good to separate these so, so your state machine doesn't get too crazy. When I first started, I have a st state machine with 20, 30 different states, and, and that was really hard to manage. Um, but for now, let's not, let's not worry about that. Let's remove this. Okay, 